1994, our next speaker became the first retailer to sell wine on the internet. He led his family liquor store in Chicago to become one of the largest retailers in the country. I had the pleasure of doing business with Sam's over the years. Selling to Brian's dad was an experience no distributor salesperson could ever forget. Brian's gone on to advise retailers, brands, and distributors on their go-to-market strategies and how to think like a retailer. Please join me in welcoming Brian Rosen. I prefer to think of the room as half full, <laughs> as opposed to half empty, that's my optimism in me. I want to tell you a baseball story um, to start, and it has relevance, it's not just a story. We were the biggest retailer in America for 30 years, selling our business in 2007. Long list of awards. Uh, kind of at our disposal. And the, the one story is this. I sat up in an office, a little bit of a crow's nest overlooking this vast inventory wasteland. And I had one salesman come to me every month for 24 months in a row, 24 visits. And on my office wall, and it was, if you've ever been to a retail account, I don't know how many vendors are here and what the makeup is of the crew. But if you've been to a retailer's office, it's not the office of IBM. There's wine here, there's wine there, there's crap everywhere. So it's not a traditional office, but it definitely gets business done. On my wall, it's a huge picture of me in the Chicago Cubs dugout. Huge picture, myself, my two kids, uh, Ryan Dempster or some other player is there. And it's a big photo, I'm very proud of him, a huge Cubs fan, a huge passionate Cubs fan. And this salesman came in every month, for 24 months, and tried to sell me a good that I probably needed, but didn't want to buy. And he left without an order every time. This went on for two years, as I had said, and I'm at a Cubs game in this two-year period, or shortly thereafter, and I'm in line for a beer and a brat, which is our way in Chicago. And in front of me is a buffoon of a guy. Truly. Full-on Cubs uniform. <coughs> Full-on. The suspenders, the white pants with the blue stripes, and the hat, and the this stuff, right? The face paint, the thumb block, they call it. And it was this guy. He turned around. It was this guy. It was a salesperson. And I said to him, I said, Tim, you come to my office every month for 24 months. You see that I am a Cubs fan. I'm a huge Cubs fan. And you've never mentioned that you're as fanatical as I am. So it got me thinking when I left retail. No one connects to the retailer. And we sit here, and I've been here for two days, and I've been doing this for many, many, many years, and I hear all about bottleneckers, and I hear all about QR codes, and I hear all about social media campaigns. They're all wonderful, and they all work. And I hear about Nielsen data, and IRI data, and I hear about all these things that help the vineyard connect to the distributor, help the distributor connect to the retailer, help, I'm sorry, help the distributor connect with the vineyard, and then help the retailer connect to the consumer, be it bottlenecks and social promotions, etc. But no one's talking to the retailer, not a soul. No one's talking to this guy. And there are 35,000 independent liquor stores in America. 35,000. You take out about 2,000 chains, maybe 1,500 chains, and the reality is, that's, let's do the math, hold on, shoes are still on, fingers, okay. There's 33,500 opportunities to sell more wine, or beer, or craft spirits. But no one's talking to those people, not a soul. So I would sit on the other side of the desk, and all these salesmen would come in, and I said, you're not selling me the way I need to be sold. So what I did in Rose and Retail is I created a disruptor. And this is a quote from speaking at the uh, New Jersey Liquor Store Association 212, or the American Beverage Conference in 2012. The most dangerous phrase in the English language has always been done this way. 
The three-tier system, I'm not here to comment whether it's flawed or not flawed or works or doesn't work. I, I, irrelevant to me. It is what it is. We have it. We have to deal with it. The reality is, is people don't pay attention to the retailer. The retail is the biggest opportunity in the marketplace. You can put Neckers on the bottle, vineyard owners, and you can put QR codes on the, bo on the uh, bottle as well. You can, you can send your crew into the street to sell, to sell over the suppliers. The reality is, is that you're missing opportunity in the retail channel. It's really quite simple. You're missing opportunity in the fact that you're not speaking the language of the retailer and you're not speaking a way the retailer wants to hear. This is traditional. I'm going to leave the stage. I'm going to walk and talk. This is traditionally how it looks. You've got vineyard, distiller, brewer, wholesaler, distributor, sales rep from the vineyard, on top of the distributor salesperson, into the retailer, into the end user. And it looks like a straw. It's a single funnel. If any piece of that puzzle falls off, it gets clogged. We talked yesterday about, well, here, survey. I have a survey. Steak and shake. Who likes it? Come on. No one? Steak and shake? Anyone? <laughs> Raise them high. Be proud. <laughs> Gosh, I, this whole, like dieters over here? Come on. Steak and shake. If you, if you have a milkshake from Steak and Shake with chocolate chips in it, this is my favorite one, and you get that chocolate chip caught in the straw, you're, you're sucking for dear life. You cannot get that straw. <laughs> right? You, your whole life is in quagmire. And that's exactly what the three-tier system is currently. There's something in the straw. This is, again, I'm not going to say flawed, not flawed. I'm just going to say there's a better way. And that's what I do. Being a 30-year retailer, being market watch, the gods that they are, they're a retailer of the year three times. I fully understand what it takes to sell more wine in the channel and get more wine from the consumer's pantry, house, wine cooler. This straw is not the way because it gets clogged. And everyone focuses on getting their wine in distributors' shelves. Everyone focuses on getting their wine from the retailer's shelf to the consumer. Promotions and Facebook and this and that, and let's give a bike away if you're a beer company. If you're a wine company, let's give away a trip or a really fancy fleece. The reality is, <laughs> the reality is, it gets stuck. Think about it like this. Think about the apple. God, it's so pretty today. And went for a run this morning. I passed 20 vineyards this morning, all within five, six miles of here. This is where we are here, top of the triangle. You layer on top of that. Sales help from the vineyard, distributor. It all gets tighter, it all gets tighter, ending up finally at retail. Think about it from this perspective. If you're a small vineyard or a small distiller or a small brewer, whatever that might be, you are going to get squeezed on the shelves at a distributor, not off the shelves. You may not have the marketing money. Definitely the sales teams don't have the bandwidth. These are guys that are making 10, 12, 15 dollars an hour who are paid to sell the big, big, big brands because those are the brands that the distributors want them to sell. So if you're a small artisanal wine, artisanal spirit, beer, what have you, you're going to stay on the shelves of your distributor unless you reverse the funnel, unless you turn it upside down, unless you come at it from the bottom up, which is kind of what we teach. We teach it through behavior modification communication, and teaching sales teams, whether at the vineyard level or the distributor level, how to speak to a retailer in the way a retailer wants to hear. We talked um, a great deal yesterday during the panel discussion, we talked a great deal about, and this is going to ruffle some feathers, but that's okay. I have therapy on Thursdays. I'm not going to be hurt. <laughs> Eight to nine in the morning. Dr. Jones. But anyway. Here's the reality. As a retailer, and I can speak for all of them, we don't care so much about terrar. We don't care so much about the weather, the angle of the hillside, the percentage of Grenache or Cab or Cab Franc or whatever. It's important. There's no question about it. If there are winemakers in the room, they'll probably get spitballs all teed up. The reality is, 
we don't care. What we care about as a retailer now, now I'm talking floor sales, I'm talking the guys who make the decisions. This is especially true at the chain level, the Bevmos and the Total Wines of the world. What we care about is skew turn. We care about gross margin. We care about what do my competitors have and what they're selling it at. Those are our decision points. So when I would go and I work in, I work, I work in Texas and Florida and California, and Colorado is a great market, we'll talk to Bree. And I go on sales calls and I sit with these key account guys, these leadership guys from the biggest distributors in America. We well, you know who they are, I'm not going to mention their name, Southern. And <laughs> they go on these calls and, and what they sell is the sexiness of the wine. They sell, this winemaker has one arm and he made this all by himself. <laughs> he, or this champagne guy riddled the bottles and he did it, you know, while nursing a baby. Whatever it is. All these things are great, and I do agree they matter in the marketing campaign, and I do agree they matter in the propaganda and the cloud materials put out by vineyards. I don't care, and I am a retailer. Retailers don't care. You go into Applejack in Denver or any of these those mega stores, Dave's or whatever they're called, you go into Vegas in Chicago or Total Wine in California or ABC in Florida, the wine, the wine buyer or spirit buyer or craft beer buyer what they want to hear is, how much is it, who carries it, what's the gross margin, are you advertising it, and how quickly can I turn it into cash? That's what they want to hear. And if your conversations do not have those components fully and completely, then that sale is compromised. What we're seeing is when we change the language and change the way sales teams at the vineyard level, because they put people on the street, and at the, at the distributor level, we change sales language we get sales. That is a proven fact. We see a 4% increase in floor space. Think about a 4% increase in floor space. And grocery is, is like the, the hidden gem of the whole thing. Grocery is the biggest opportunity you have. Then chain and then independent. But again, there's 33,500 indies out there. And if you can speak their language, if you understand what's important to them, keeping the lights on, cash flow, turning goods quickly, getting consumers in and out and making money in that process, that's when they'll start to sell more goods and not be so dependent on the three-tier chocolate chip and the straw block. That's when they'll start to use some of this bottom-up methodology. When you can buy in in all these tiers, if you get retail buy-in, you've got 33,000 allies working on behalf of your brand, not one salesperson working on behalf of your brand. Again, You've got the traditional sales funnel. Everyone's funneled into one retailer. Anything goes wrong, anything goes awry in that, in that reverse triangle, or that triangle, that funnel, then you're stuck. You're stuck. You lose one retailer, one major account by a, a language issue, and you've lost the chain. On the inverse, if you create a bottom-up methodology, if you create a language, if you teach your teams how to sell speaking to a retailer in a retailer's language, and this goes for hotels and probably on-prem as well, you'll see cases increase. There's a product imbalance right at this fulcrum. This is where it can go south in either direction. Here, this is that chip, so to speak. You mess up there, you've killed it. And here, the same thing. If you don't enlist influencers or mid-tier and low-tier retailers to be your allies and you enlist them, again, with language, behavior, modification, if you miss that fulcrum point, then you'll be stuck back on that straw. What we forget is that this is the real customer. This is the real customer because the consumers will come. We're not, you know, we're not creating new drinkers and we're not losing new drinkers. We're just spreading the money around. If they're not buying it independence, they're buying a mega box. If they're not buying a mega box, they're buying a grocery. If they're not buying a grocery, they're buying a chain or indie or C store or whatever. But we're not losing customers, they're just getting spread around. We're not greater drinkers, we're not losing your drinkers. What we are doing 
what we are doing is we need to figure out a way, which I've done, which we've done, our team, to speak to the retailer in the retailer's language so they fully understand and they buy more goods. Thank you.